What's up guys, welcome back to the game room. I'm super stoked to bring you guys the Windows 10 update from Extreme Home Arcades. This is an update that I have been uh, excited to do myself to say the least. I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys to try to answer everything I can as quickly as I can. But um, I want to give you guys a little bit of information on what you can expect from updating this system. Uh, most of the machines, pretty much all the machines, as of right now, they are on the Windows 7 platform. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions about new games, new games, what new games are being added. The short answer is not that many. There is a good reason for that though. I have called the company, I've spoken to Dave, I've spoken to a couple other workers at the company. Um, the main reason is they are migrating from Windows 7, which is becoming completely obsolete, to Windows 10. And if you want to update your machines at any point moving forward and take full advantage of all the content that comes on these machines, you will need the 10 terabyte hard drive and the Windows 10 platform. So for the last six, seven months, David from Extreme Home Arcades has been working diligently to migrate all of that content from Windows 7 to the Windows 10 platform, which has not left them much time to add new games to the systems. Uh, a lot of you have been asking about PS3 games. There are no new PS3 games. I'm going to cut to the chase right now. Uh, it's the same five PS3 games that have been um, in the PS3 wheel since PS3 was added. But that being said, now that they have done the migration, I believe they will begin to add new games all of the time, as they always have. But it's just the fact that the Windows 7 software and hardware is becoming obsolete and uh, it doesn't mean you have to upgrade. I want to make that loud and clear. If you already own one of these machines and you're on the fence as to whether or not you should update to Windows 10, the first question you should ask yourself is, do I like my machine the way it is? And am I fine with all the content? And do I have all the games that I could ever want to play? If that's your answer, you can leave it like this forever. However, if you're like me and you want to upgrade your machine once every few months or six months like I tend to do, you do have to migrate to Windows 10 because that is the future of the business, of the company and of these machines. So I did drop a uh, message on YouTube for all of you asking what you wanted to see. I will do my best to try and showcase some of those games. Some of you want to see light gun games, trackball games, certain pinball games, just new games. There are a handful of newer games that I will show you. Um, and the biggest thing is the PS2 games. Uh, even on my 8 terabyte hard drive, I had all of the PS2 games that come on it, which is, I believe, every game ever made for PS2. However, as time went on over the last 6-7 months, they haven't been able to fit all of the PS2 games on the 8, 8 terabyte hard drive. So if you are a big PS2 fan and you want that full catalog, you will have to update to the Windows 10 platform with the 10 terabyte hard drive because it is the only way you will have all those games. But uh, without any further ado, let's jump into it. I'm going to show you guys a quick unboxing of the hard drive and the instructions that come with it. It is kind of a lengthy process. You will have to get a wireless Wi-Fi dongle. I bought a Netgear one from Walmart for like 30 bucks. I'll show it to you in the next little clip. And after the unboxing, we'll jump into it, play some games. Leave your comments below. Ask me anything you want to ask. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you so much. Let's get into it. Quick unboxing of my new Windows 10 hard drive and SSD drive show you what comes in the package if you do decide to update your Megacade to the Windows 10 platform I'm about to show you what comes with it and I'll show you the instructions on what needs to be done so first we have here the instructions from Extreme Home Arcades and as you can see, you got to follow about nine steps here on the front. But uh, if there's one of the last steps here, if that doesn't work, there's an alternative. Every computer can tend to do different things. So here we go. There's the back. But as you can see, it's kind of like a little bit of a process, nine steps. What we have in the box here, one moment. Okay, this is better. So we have everything out of the box now. Got your instructions here. This is my old eight terabyte hard drive. As you can see, he wrote unaltered on it. So he didn't do anything to it. And the reason I send that in 
is because it's got all my saved high scores and button configurations and just settings and uh, game lists. And, you know, when I categorize games that are my favorites, it's all on there. So if you want to update to this, boom, the 10 terabyte game drive. This is the new Windows 10. I know it's on, Windows 10 isn't necessarily super new, but on these types of machines, this is a big upgrade. So um, he can transfer all the data that you have saved on this and put it on this. So that's why I send my old backup drive in. Here are the SSD drives that come with it. This one is the one that goes with the new uh, 10 terabyte drive. And this is my old one that uh, I sent in with my old hard drive so that he could use whatever data he needed from those for this upgrade. I don't even think I really needed to send this one in to be honest with you, but now it's backed up and it's usable with the 10 terabyte drive. So I'm not gonna do a full review on how to install this stuff. It's just, uh, I'll show you what it's like when it's up and running, but I just wanted to include this in the video so that you can see what the unboxing looks like and what you can expect. One other quick thing here too, you can see step number, five on the list install usb wi-fi dongle or connect to your home wi-fi network so these are basically desktop computer hardware in here and um, it does not have the ability to get on the wireless internet unless you plug it in directly with a cat5 cable or you buy one of these which is what i picked up at walmart for like 30 bucks 32 bucks just a netgear wireless ac adapter it's dual band Wi-Fi router or works with any Wi-Fi router. So I'm gonna plug this into one of my USB ports under here. So I added this little USB hub to easy access. So I will let you know how it goes. Here we go, Madden NFL 20. I'm not a football guy, but uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are. I was gonna open up, here we go, NBA 2K20. This is new, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on one of our wireless controllers as you can see, it's an Xbox controller. It's automatically connected. I have four of them. You only get two, I think, if you order it, unless you want four. Uh, you can add two of these at any time. It'll connect right to the, to the little um, receiver for the Microsoft receiver, and you'll be good to go. Well, let's open up NBA 2K20 and mess around with that for a quick minute. Now, this is actually your mouse, and this is your left click, right click, and middle click for a mouse. Uh, some of the PC-based games play like that. For the most part, you're just going to use this controller here. I haven't played this game yet, so <laughs> let's just see how it goes. Let me turn the volume up a little bit here. Uh, let's do a quick play. Yep, looks great. The picture's beautiful, you know, especially these newer newer games, you know, it's it's obviously gonna look just as good on this as it would on your you know, your PS4 or whatever. Alright, here we go. I'm sure there's gonna be some sort of tutorial stuff, but you know, I'm just gonna try and get through it real quick. You gotta go through a lot of this crap, you know how these games are. Here we go. Green and Cauley Stein are down low. Curry and Russell are the back for the set. And it's Thompson in at the three set. And for Toronto, Siakam at power forward with Gasol at center. And Van Vliet out there with Lowry. And it's Powell in the three. Here's Cauley Stein. And Cauley Stein throws it down. Hey, uh, yeah, Kevin, you can't afford to leave someone open around Curry. He's great at keeping his head on the swivel. So there's no lag. The graphics are beautiful. I mean, you get the idea. Uh, like a lot of people are concerned with lag and stuff. These computers are definitely well equipped to handle what you need to handle on these machines and these games. 
there's a lot of filler on this stuff. I don't want to take up too much time. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the gameplay. I'll have to get back into this and play some more later on. Seems pretty sweet. So, in order to get out of the game, we're going to hold player one start, tap player two. That's going to back us up a menu. There we go. So now we're back in the main wheel, I believe. Oh, not yet. Not yet. There we go. I'm gonna use the mouse, the mouse, the trackball, and the aux buttons to uh, exit. Let me really make it tough for you to get out of that game. So now we're back in the main wheel. Let me turn the volume back down. NBA 2K, whatever this is, Playgrounds. Um, let me show you something that I'm actually really, really excited about here. I'm a huge Hydro Thunder fan. I played a ton of the first Hydro Thunder game from the arcades. So let's go back up here real quick. I know some of you have asked for some racing games. Uh, this is one of the cool things about Extreme Home Arcades. Like if you have a game that you really want on the machine, you can contact them and say, hey, I want to, I really want to have this game on the machine. What can we do about getting the game on it? It will add it to the machine for everybody else that purchases one moving forward. But right here, there's a category called customer requests. So I requested Hydro Thunder Hurricane, which is the second installment of Hydro Thunder. And these are all games that the company has added per the user's requests. So let me find Hydro Thunder. Let's play a little bit of that. I'm really excited about this being on the machine. I love these games. So with this game, you will use, you, you can use the wireless controller if you want, but you can also just use the buttons and joysticks because these are mapped to keyboard instructions. They're mapped for like keyboard commands. So here we go. We're gonna use the mouse features to get through this. Okay, okay, single player. So wherever you want to, you know, you use the trackball just like a mouse. So let's do uh, a race. This track's pretty dope, let's do that. So down here, hit the arrow over, pick your boat. All right, let's do Banshees until that's like the best one I got. I always prefer to use the buttons and joysticks because I feel like it's far more, you know, the way God intended it type of way. But this game is sweet. It's super fun to play. I believe you can play two-player split screen, but I haven't really uh, tried that yet. I should probably give that a shot. Now, a lot of people ask me about playing these games online. These machines, I did not buy this machine to play it online. I have zero interest in playing any of these games online. Uh, I bought it for the nostalgia, for, you know, just the sake of having all the games that I grew up with playing in the arcade. Now, that being said, I'm pretty sure if you have your Wi-Fi dongle plugged in and you are online, I think you can play games like this online. Because in the beginning of this, you know, in the entry screen on this game, you could probably see how it said sign into Xbox. If the machine's online and you sign into Xbox, I'm quite sure you can uh, quite sure you can play online. So I know they have split screen online playing capabilities. Uh, I'm more into it just unlocking all the boats and getting everything all beefed up. And you know, my son and I play this game, so it's fun. Well, uh, these tracks are long. They're really feature rich. The graphics are great. Um, so maybe we'll get through a whole track. How about that? Finish this track. Boost is going to be right underneath. It's this button four is what they call it. You can go into the menu and you can change the settings in all these games to tell it which buttons and you know you want to use for whatever type of controller setup you want to use. You can change the controller setup for the wireless controllers as well. All good. So once you're going like 
fast as hell, you uh, start to blur a bit. It's a new feature. But here we go. So that is Hydro Thunder Hurricane. I am really excited to get the rest of this stuff unlocked and uh, just go wave shit on it. So let's go uh, out of here. Let's finish up this. It's telling me what I won. Hey, I unlocked a new track. I'll get back to that later. All right. So to back out, you're going to use the mouse and you know the mouse feature. So we're going to click the back arrow. We're going to go to. It's, I think here we can just hit. Well, we're going to go to, oh, up in the very top right corner, I forgot to just click out of this one. So here we go, tap on the X, closes the screen, and here we are back in the customer request folder. I'm going to back out of that by holding player one starts, having player two start, and then here we are back in the main wheel. So I have some other requests from some of you. You want to see some... I got a bunch of people asking about Dragon's Lair. Let's find Dragon's Lair. I'm pretty sure that's right in the main wheel, somewhere right around gun games. Believe it or not, I've never played it. I've never been a Dragon's Lair guy. Actually, it took a lot of shit from people on YouTube because I pronounced R-Type as Row-Type, which I never played it. The logo looked like Row. Um, I personally don't care, but... Uh, I'm more into it for giving you guys info on this type of stuff. Showing you what it's got. Just because I haven't played every 70,000 games on the machine doesn't mean that. You know what, so let's use the Hyperspin Universal Search option for the Mega K to see if we can just find Dragon's Lair without going through everything. So... See what it comes up with. All right, here we are. So we're back in the Universal Search. I uh, typed in Dragon's Lair and I found Dragon's Lair 1 and 2. Uh, let's check out Dragon's Lair 2, see how it is. I think this is uh, from the Daphne emulator on the machine. I was never really too familiar with Dragon's Lair. I never played it. So, here we go. Okay, whatever this is, here's for all you Dragon's Lair fans. Oops, missed it. Apparently I gotta go in the directions that it tells me to go. I don't know anything about this game. My last try for you Daphne fans. I know I'm this is a sucky attempt, but at least you get the picture. Alright. I'll learn this on another day. But it seems to be playing just fine in my opinion. So when we back out of this, it takes us right back to the universal search folder. Again, I believe you can just go into the Daphne. Matter of fact, I'm positive you can. I think it's somewhere in here in the emulator, like console categories and stuff. So there you have it, Dragon's Lair. Let's move along. So a lot of you have been asking about other light gun games. There's a million light gun games to play on this machine. Uh, I'll open up gun games and I'll play a couple real quick just to see uh, what you guys think. Um, 
Let's open up Area 51 real quick first. That's a great game. We'll play that. I had another guy asking about the Jurassic Park gun game. We'll open that up and play that for a quick minute. Um, there is the Jurassic Park 2 game on this machine. Um, I also want to make something really, really clear for anyone who's planning to buy. I want to get my light gun out here. So here's my light gun. I have the uh, recoil effect on my gun. These, if you, you can open up these gun games in the regular arcade category, but I highly advise that you open them in the gun game category. The reason why is because if you open them in the car arcade category, they're going to have a bezel on each side of the screen, and that bezel is kind of like, when you're using this light gun, you're using like a mouse, right? So if you were shooting off to the edge and you shoot on that bezel, it's going to jack up the system and freeze up the game and do a bunch of dumb stuff. That's why this is categorizing gun games. Now, you can open it in arcade category. You just have to hold player one start and hit up on the joystick, and it will remove the bezel, and you can play it just like this. Most people forget that. They buy the machine. They go to play gun games in arcade classics, and it doesn't work right, and they get frustrated. Just play it in the gun category. Let's coin up a little bit, and we'll play some Area 51. Let's do the warp ahead. I always want to shoot him every time. So you can reload by pushing this right button on the side of your gun that reloads it. I do have a light gun hack little tutorial video you can find on my page if you do have your recoil your recoil mechanism malfunctions I'll show you how to fix it. It's not any fault of Extreme Home Arcades, it's just the way that they manufacture the light gun, although Dave definitely does help you and replace the parts if they have issues. I know I'm missing a lot of stuff here, but I'm doing a lot of talking. You can still reload traditionally by shooting off down to the bottom right, or the bottom corner of the screen, I should say. Let's see, I'll see if I can show you that. There we go, just reloads, shooting down the bottom right corner, bottom left corner. I just prefer to push the button because it's like a thousand times easier. Whenever you get a grenade, you push this side, and it'll uh, basically waste everyone on the screen. Here we go, got some... Uh, Shotgun. Shotgun movies. Uh, it does have um, Area 51, I think it's Area 51 Max or something like that, like the second version of this. Uh, super fun game to play. I got a grenade, so I'll show you how that works. Let's get a bunch of guys on the screen, or at least a few. There you go, just waste them all. You can turn the cursor off, by the way. I prefer to have the cursor on. Matter of fact, let me show you a little something. Let's pause this. You pause the game by holding player one start and hitting down. You open up the menu. If you so choose to mess with stuff, I like to mess with stuff. Hold player one start, tap to the right, and it'll take you to the inputs on the machine. Here's your crosshair options, hit player one start. You can make it the default, blue, you know, green, red, whatever, yellow. I like default, visibility on, off. So with that being said, I'm going to leave it the way it was on auto. Let's go back to the game. You can either hit return to the machine or you can hit player one start and right and it'll take you back. I'm going to unpause it. And that's how you change the crosshair settings. Just for you guys who want to have that absolute arcade perfect gameplay where you don't see a crosshair, I like the crosshairs. Anyway, let's get out of this. Let's check out JP. I think it's in my short list. I'm going to go to my uh, favorites here. Alien 3, the gun is pretty dope. All right, let's go to Jurassic Park. I think I already showed this game on one of my other reviews, so I'll try not to spend too much time, but here's the thing. This game was mounted on, this came with a machine gun in the arcade mounted on uh, like, a, like a stick axis. So it plays that way. You just have to kind of monitor where your 
crosshairs at, right? So you can see I barely have to move it and it's already whipping across the other side of the screen. That's because it thinks it's being used in the arcade like on a stand. So now because this is a machine gun based game, you're only gonna hear the recoil when you pull the trigger the first time and hold it. If that annoys you, you can always unplug the recoil and turn it off altogether, no big deal. You just reach underneath and unplug it and go from there. I'm trying to show you guys the gun in the frame, but it really plays better when you stand back a few feet away from the machine. It's easier to aim, it, it's a far better gameplay experience. Oh, here we go. I think the rafters are in here. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's super realistic. Here we go. You know, these games are just quarter suckers in the arcade, you know what I mean? There's no way you're ever going to beat these games without dying a million times, I mean. You can also go in and you can change the difficulty levels on these games too. It's just like any other operator can change it in the arcade. So there you have it. There's JP. Let's back out of here. We're back into gun games. Alright gang, so we're back in the regular arcade classics category, one of my favorite categories. I did have someone ask me about the X-Men game, so yes, the X-Men 4 player game is on here. Let's boot this sucker up and uh, see what it's all about. I'm going to shamefully say I've never played this game, I just was never a huge X-Men fan. As you can see, here's that bezel I was telling you about that would pop up on any gun game. So let's wait for this to... Finish checking the ROMs and all that good stuff. These games think that you're turning them on. They think they're still in an arcade. So you're getting the actual arcade ROM emulated. It's going to boot up the ROM, check the ROMs, all that good stuff. So there we go. We're going to coin up. Let's coin up all the guys. So you got player one, player two, player three, player four. And um, here we go. It's going to be... Pretty difficult to move around four guys, but I'll just show you a couple minutes. I mean, these four player games are super fun to play. If you ever played Ninja Turtles or Turtles in Time, I play those games pretty often. These games, in my opinion, they play just as good as the arcade perfect versions. They pretty much are, in my opinion. It's an emulated version that's just being played on something newer. So. So jump button two, just like Ninja Turtles, these uh, beat em up games. Let's see. I'm gonna try and fight my own people. Let's move everybody over. It's the only way we're gonna get more enemies to fight. I shouldn't have done four people, but I wanted to show you the four player experience. Let's let a couple people die off. <laughs> Get up. Yeah, so. Another quarter sucker, the good old quarter suckers, man. Love these games growing up. Like I said, not a big X-Men guy, but I definitely played a lot of the turtle stuff. Mortal Kombat was, was my grip back in the day. I got the machine right there with all four original PCBs in it. I got another video on that if you guys wanna watch it, but that's off the subject here. Here we go, X-Men four player, it's on there. Let's move right along into something else. Show you guys a little bit more about what the machine has to offer. Alright, so I had a couple of you guys ask me about some pinball games. 
There's three or four pinball categories on the machine. We're gonna check one out right now. My personal favorite pinball category is Future Pinball. Where is it? There it is, Future Pinball. Let's open up Future Pin and see what we're working with. My favorite table is Jurassic Park. We've already played that before. So I had a couple people asking me about Black Knight and Ghostbusters. So let's see if Black Knight is on it. Long press to the right or the left on your joystick, it'll bring up the alphabet. Let's go to Black Knight, see if we have it. Black Jack, Black Knight, here we go. Black Knight, let's open this up and uh, check it out. So once the game extracts, it's just like any other game. You're going to coin up using the coin button right here. Your flippers are left and right flipper. This is your plunger, and you can nudge with all three of these. I think the, the pinball emulation of these machines is super dope. A little Ace of Spades playing. All right, so I've coined up. There is a follow cam. You can do several different angles by pressing your AUGS button one up here. That's your scrolling. So when you when you shoot it, it's gonna scroll around, I believe, when it comes down. It's nice. See, gotta nudge it once in a while. It plays just like the actual pin tables. Let's go to a different view. Actually, this view is pretty sweet too. Black Knight got a little, uh, I'm trying to nudge it and get it out of where it's at. I think I might have tilted it. Let me back out of this. We got Black Knight 2000. I don't know which one. Apparently there's three of them. Let's do Black Knight 2002. Why not? So I have it set up. You can go in, like I said, and you can mess with stuff. I like to tinker and mess with things. I have mine set up so that when you open the table, it has my favorite view of the table. This is my favorite view. The top view, you can see everything really well. I'll show you the different angles right now. Low angles and you're fixed. Full table one, full table two. Let's leave it on full table two for now. Throw some coins in, here we go. So plunger, some of them you gotta hold, so. This is the same table I just played. I don't call myself an expert pinball player, as you can see, but this is just for the sake of showing people what they want. For some reason, the ball likes to get stuck up there when you uh, shoot it. You can get them set up with the buttons on the sides of your machine to play these tables. Let's back out of this. Let's go to another one. What was the other game I had a user or a uh, follower asking about? It's uh, Ghostbusters. Let's go to Ghostbusters. I'm going to long press the joystick. We're going to go to G. Actually, not want to do that. There we go. There it was right there. Uh, so we got Ghostbusters right here. Let's see if there's any other ones around it. Yeah, so there's... We want, the, we want this guy right here. Okay. I think Future Pin has the best pinball emulation. There is um, a Stern Pinball emulator, and there is, um, I believe, something called like Future Pinball 1, 2, and 3. 
those are cool, but it's not what you're looking for. If you're looking for a table experience where you can see that table exactly the way that you remembered it in the arcade, Future Pinball is not going to be that. That's more of an immersive experience with a full HD screen and a follow cam and there's moving parts and stuff all over the place. It's just, it's cool to play, but it's not the OG. So if that makes any sense. So let's coin this up and hit start. Here we go. Sorry about my lackluster pinball skills here. Some other cool tables, there's Theater of Magic is on here. That's a sweet table. It's got all the Indiana Jones tables, my favorite Jurassic Park. Um, I'll pull one more ball here and move this video along. Come on, let's go. There. Um, the Simpsons is a super fun table. Uh, Family Guy is a really fun table. There we go. I had to nudge it a few times. I mean, if the ball gets stuck in a in a spot on one of the regular tables, it's going to get stuck in that same spot on these on this emulator. It's just and they really do a sweet job at emulating these tables. All right, I've had enough. There you go. There's Ghostbusters. At least that's the only Ghostbusters I know of. There could be more in here. Um, I don't know what they call them or what the newer names are, but let's back out of here. There is a Game of Thrones uh, pinball table in here too. I'll get, maybe get into that in another video. All right, so I've had some requests for Virtua Fighter and Tekken, so let's play that real quick. Try and wrap this video up here. I've played Virtual Fighter 1 and 2 a few times. I think they play perfectly fine, just the exact way I remember playing them in the arcades. Where are we at? Virtual Fighter. I know it has Virtual Fighter 2 elsewhere. There's also other main categories. So let me just queue up Virtual Fighter. We'll play that, and then I'll find uh, some Tekkens. It even has brand new versions of Tekken that are brand new PC versions of the game or games that I believe you can buy for Xbox and uh, PlayStation. So this is the original gangster right here. Take this dude. My brother is way more of a virtual fighter player than I am. Like I said, MK is my, my joint. So I think this was a three button game. So it's only the top three buttons worth here. That's why I like this setup the way I have it. Most of these games are gonna be two buttons, three buttons, or they're gonna be six buttons. And then if there's seven and eight, you got your thumb buttons down there. I also have done another video on my button layout, why I chose it and why I like it so much. You can check that out on my channel. I think this plays awesome. Now, if you want to get rid of this bezel, because it does not have the artwork from Virtual Fighter, hit player on start, tap up, boom, removes that bezel for you. Super simple. And here's another handy thing. Let's say you got it coined up with a million coins, and you're every time you're halfway through the game, and every time you back out of it, when you come back in, it's going to set you up right where you were. If you want to soft reset the game like you're rebooting it in the arcade, you're going to hold joystick left and hit player one start and it will reboot that particular PCB board and you can start over from scratch. So there we go. There's some virtual fighter. Let's find Tekken and see what see what Tekken's talking about. So we got Tekken 1, Tekken 2, Tekken 3, whatever this tag is. 
And now, mind you, this is just in the arcade classic category. There is more Tekken games. Let's just play one of these. Tekken 3 sounds fantastic. Let's give this a shot. Usually these arcade classic games boot up pretty damn quick. I'm going to remove that bezel just because I feel like sometimes it looks better when it has no bezel around it. Alright, let's go. Turn the volume up. You do have the volume control right there, and that's why you keep seeing me. Reach under there for the volume. Wasn't a huge Tekken guy growing up. I've definitely played it here and there. Let's pick this guy. Yoshimitsu. Got some smooth jazz going in the background there. What do we got? So we got. Perfect example of why this six button setup works. So we got two. We you could make these your two punches and these your two kicks if you want. But I just got smoked, so don't listen to me. I think these games play flawlessly. I don't see any. You could actually turn off graphic smoothing if you want to have a more pixely arcade experience. I prefer it like this because. The HD, um, you know, 1080p LED TVs, they're going to expose far more flaws in the game than any CRT monitor ever would have anyway. So in my opinion, leaking on a little bit of graphic smoothing, it's, it makes it still play pretty much arcade perfect, in my opinion. All right, so here we go. There's Tekken. And I know I've had a request for some trackball stuff, so let me... Let's move on to maybe some trash ball stuff and see what we got. Okay, cool. So here's the track ball. I haven't reviewed this game yet. I've played it once or twice. So we're going to play Simpsons Bowling. I'm going to remove that bezel. And you can use the track ball to choose normal controls. I guess I'll pick Homer. There we go. Okay, ready. I'm ready to. Here we go. They gotta go through their little spiel before we play, I guess. Alright. Apparently I'm playing a four player game, so let's go. Nope, three of us. I'm going to be learning how to play this game as I show you. Like I said, I've played it before, but I do not remember how to play it. Alright, I see. So use the trackball to uh, set your curve. You can use the joystick too. Alright, so position the player. Use the trackball to position him. Now he's positioned. The start approach. Okay, so we tap the button. All right, apparently I gotta hit another button to let go of it. All right, set it, set it. All right, apparently I have to tap a different button to make it let go of it. All right, let's see what Marge does. So, duh, use the trackball to go forward. Nice strike, March. Let's give one off with Bart here, see how that goes. Cool. So, we're going to set the curve. Always like to set a little draw on your ball. That's, let's end on that. So there's a little trackball game for you. Let's dive into one more. I really do enjoy a lot of trackball games on my machine. Um, turn the volume back down on her. View favorites. This is just a short list of my favorites. 
World Class Bowling Deluxe. You know what? I've already shown that. Let's get out of here and let's go to... So this is going to be the highest version of Golden Tea that you're going to get. I know I've shown this before, but I'm just going to go into this wheel and play one quick hole on Golden Tea Complete. I used to own this Golden Tea Complete machine when I lived back in Michigan when I had a basement and yeah, you know, had a little arcade going there. I think this game plays... It's, I mean, you can shoot just as low on this game as you could in the arcade, on the actual arcade machine. I love it. So I have it set to free play. Let's just go to one player. I'm gonna go through the courses. The trackball and everything is super smooth. Tropical Falls, let's do the bag. I do have another video where I've showed you that I do have a Golden Tee 2018 on this machine. You can see it on my last update video. If you wanna see that, check it out. But I mean, this is this works pretty flawlessly to me. Let's do a flyby here. I set these buttons up to be flyby in the center. It's really easy to do left, right. So uh, let's hit our backspin and see how this shot goes. So I nailed that one. Stale. I mean. Some of the other machines I've seen, they have a way glitchier versions of Golden Tee. These machines play Golden Tee, in my opinion, just as good. I mean, they play it flawlessly. So let's see if we can get up. He's got it on the short track. Sample one, playing for Palmer. Sample one, playing for Palmer. So, again, not the greatest display. Of Golden Tee. We'll play one more hole and then we'll wrap this up. But you Golden Tee fans out there, you will not be disappointed. There is every version of Golden Tee from 99 all the way up until 2006 here. And I have a little shot bezel. I don't know if you guys can see this down here, but it's the swing guide for Golden Tee because that's how much we like to play it on this machine. I'm going to do a slight draw backwards and hit it straight. And then you can see it kind of drawn over the trees there. Straight back on this one. You got a lot of room for hand travel here too. That's what I like a lot about playing it. Jeez. So I used to have a spinner knob here. I actually moved it over here and plugged this hole with a, a little blank buttonhole cover just because it was way in the way when we were playing Golden Tee. That would be a big piece of advice I have for anyone who is an avid Golden Tee player. Do not get your spinner button put here next to the joystick. I, I'm just literally letting this go, but you get the point. I would have it put over here. I mean, it responds to the softness and everything. It's very touchy, just like the actual arcade controls. Um, you get the picture. I said I was going to do one. I've now blown this whole thing in two holes, but it's kind of hard to concentrate when you're playing and reviewing. So. All right, so a lot of you guys have been asking about racing games. This this one right here, Chase HQ2, this, this is a cool game. Um, in my opinion, this Fast and the Furious game is one of the funnest games to play on this machine. It is a raw thrills game. I, I pulled it up in one of my past interviews, but at the time, it did not have the controls mapped to play on the play field. It had a wonky gameplay using these controllers, and you had to your acceleration was by pushing your analog stick forward. It was really stupid. Um, but now, Dave, uh, I did tell him, hey, look, I want to play this game on the playfield. He went in, reconfigured, and remapped the controls. Now all of the new machines coming out to this day have these controls this way, and I'm just going to let this boot up. Should only take a few seconds. You can hit start to fast forward that a little bit. All right, here we are. So raw thrills, it's on free play. So the joystick works to select everything. This is gonna be gas. This is gonna be nitrous on button three. And let's play something like racehorse. This, this is a dope track. Now I actually have I, you can put key in your phone number or whatever. If you hit 
the coin button, it takes you to the keypad. Now there's no real way to actually use your phone number or something like that. So I literally just hit it four times on five times. So you can just hit the button five and it's hidden up there. And uh, so I just go five times on the coin button when I open it up and that brings me into all my saved stuff. You gotta let the timer run out. Hit, it will go automatic. And then now you can see all my cars are modded out. I've been playing a ton of this game. It's super fun. Let's just go with this uh, spider. So everything's maxed out. You just gotta wait for the timer to go down. I know it's kind of lame, but whatever. It is what it is. It thinks it's in the arcade. It thinks it's waiting for someone else to sit and join next to you. Uh, the only downside is, is you don't have two-player capability on this machine. Well, on this game, I should say. So we'll do one quick track on this, and um, I think this is one of the dopest racing games on the machine. So instead of double hit, you can double tap the gas to do a like a high, like a boost wheelie, but this button four right below, you can tap that any time and do the same thing. So you can basically joust on, or uh, jump off of other cars. If you're doing wheeling and another car's coming at you, or you got one in your lane, you can't get by it. There you go. You can basically vault the other cars. You do have a little bit of control in the air if you want to. If you're flipping and you want to try and land a certain way, you do have a little bit of control of the air. Now this game, you know, does have some bugs in it. This is a newly ported game. Um, some boobs one so this is one of my favorite racing games on the machine I know I don't cover them that much but I highly recommend playing this especially with the new control mapping that they did about I don't know five months ago or so um, let's back out of here and uh, move on all right guys that wraps up my latest video for the Windows 10 update I'm sorry I didn't have a lot of newer content to show you guys, but there's still always games to show you every time I turn this thing on. I try to get to all the requests and show the games that people want to see. Let me know if you want to see some more. I'm going to continue to make these updates. Um, if you have any questions about the Windows 10 migration or how you do that update on your machine, I'll answer it as best I can. There are a couple little things that you need to go into in settings. Uh, like I said, that um, unboxing with a little instruction list. Might want to pause it. I'll see if I can maybe scan it in and put it as a screenshot on there or something for you guys. Or maybe put it below in the description if I can. Anyway, uh, if you have questions, I'll answer them as best I can. Dave is the one who can answer them best. You can always email or call the company anytime. But with that being said, I appreciate you guys watching. Please like and subscribe. Ring the bell, and uh, I'll let you know when there's any new videos coming out. Um, ask questions, drop them below. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.